Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference kicked off today with a keynote laying out the future of its desktop OS, iCloud, the MacBook family, and finally iOS 7, the much-anticipated overhaul of Apple's mobile operating system. In a packed room full of luminaries like Steve Wozniak and Al Gore, Apple first laid out a distinction between mere convenience and, that's right, they dropped a J-bomb joy, followed by other ideals like love and compassion. Out comes Tim Cook to contextualize the keynote with some gigantic numbers. 575 million Apple accounts, $10 billion paid out to developers, etc. Yes, Apple sees the app marketplace as a core strength as evidenced by innovative development like this Anki Drive racing game. Then on to OS X, for which Apple has finally run out of cat names. So they've moved on to Mavericks, an homage to the famous surf spot just miles from Apple's HQ in Cupertino. Following a Sassy dig at Windows 8. That compares to Windows 8. We're just kind of struggling to get to five. We are treated to a range of improvements in OS 10. Finder tabs, tagging for easier search, merging windows, multiple displays, and perhaps most importantly, battery life through intelligent optimization of apps. Safari also enjoys some big upgrades relating to both function and efficiency, especially next to Firefox. Other tweaks to the OS include a more intelligent calendar that integrates with an also improved Maps. In Maps now, you can send directions to your phone directly and enjoy a lovely flyover experience, in Paris at least, and more. But the real star of the keynote was iOS 7, which many are looking to as a critical chance for Apple to re-establish its leading position in the mobile space. In response to recent surveys indicating iOS is losing ground to Android, Cook pointed out that customer satisfaction is very high among iPhone users and that iOS is a better environment for developers as compared to Android. So onward to iOS 7. What's it about? True simplicity with a coherent structure, says Johnny Ive, lead developer for Apple. We're seeing refined typeface, all redesigned icons, and a whole new color palette. Q standing ovation. Finally, in describing the sheer beauty of this new design, Apple pokes fun at its own failings in reference to the old Game Center layout. And Game Center, we just completely ran out of green felt. <laughs> So what about features? A few highlights are the new control center, accessible with one swipe. Here you can toggle all the basic stuff like Wi-Fi and screen brightness that you used to have to dig around in settings for. Multitasking. It's now for all apps instead of just select ones. The priority, as with Mavericks, is to preserve battery life with intelligent power optimization of your most used apps. A new unified search field and tabs in Safari improve the browsing experience on mobile and AirDrop has finally come to iOS. Also redesigned is the camera app and the photo app that organizes your photo stream into moments and collections by day and location, along with enhanced sharing options. And then there's Siri. Siri got not only a facelift, but a super advanced sex change. Siri can now be male or female and is a little bit smarter than before. Hi Eddie, what can I do for you? And you can also choose a male voice. Hi Eddie, what can I do for you? New Siri ties into iOS in the car, what they call an eyes-free experience for basic commands like directions. Apps also update automatically for you instead of drowning you in those push notifications. Finally, another long-awaited new product from Apple, its music streaming service, coming on the heels of others like Spotify, Pandora, and RDO, which have all been around for years. And at this point, we all pretty much know how these work. Listen to a featured station or make your own, say, a Led Zeppelin station. A loaded choice considering that that band in particular has been among the most resistant to allowing their music on streaming services. And of course, you can give iTunes Radio feedback on the stations, including a Never Play the Song Again feature. Thank goodness for that. iOS 7 is available in beta today for developers, with the final version coming in the fall sometime. It will operate on iPhone 4, 4S, 5, the iPad 2, 3, and 4th gen, the iPad mini, and the iPod Touch 5th generation. So did today's announcements meet your expectations? Are you looking forward to any of these new products and services and features? Let us know your reactions in the comments. For TF and this is Annie.